everyone, I'm Alejandra from alejandra.tv and in this video I'm going to share with you two ways to organize your files. But first, if you have stacks of paperwork, piles of documents that are just accumulating on horizontal surfaces around your house and you're having a hard time getting started, making decisions, decluttering, there's a link below to offer you support and accountability if you could benefit from that. Okay, so when it comes to files, uh, there's two ways to organize them. There's more ways to organize them, but in this video, I'm gonna share two ways. The first way is with a traditional filing cabinet. So I have been using the same filing system for about eight or nine years. It is really easy to set up. It's intuitive, it's color coded, um, and I highly recommend it if you're looking for an easy filing system. So all you do here is um, to set it up, you, categorize your documents and then you decide what major category they belong in. So all the tabs are color coded, not the actual files. You can, not the file folders. You can color code your file folders, but it makes it harder to maintain. So I recommend sticking to one color file folder and just color coding your tabs. So all of the red are um, your most important documents that you never wanna get rid of. All of the orange are documents that get updated periodically. So an insurance policy that gets updated every year would go in orange. Green is anything financial. Blue is any tax related documents. Purple is any special interest. And then they also have um, brown and gray as well that's not here. Uh, but it's a great system. I uh, have spent the past month or so going through all the papers inside my house, decluttering, getting rid of things that are outdated, expired, things I don't need anymore. And uh, what I've done is I've come to the realization that I do not like opening up a heavy file drawer and sticking papers inside of an awkward shaped file folder. And I feel like very limited to the amount of organizing that can actually get done in a file folder. Like you can staple things together, binder clip them, paper clip them, but um, I really wanted to take it to another level. So I decided to switch all of my papers in my filing cabinet to all of these binders up here. Uh, what I did was, in addition to decluttering, removing things that are outdated, I also took out any documents that are um, my most important documents that if I was in an emergency situation, you know, what would I run and grab? You know, if you're in that situation, you don't wanna to have to come here and make a decision even though they really are in the red section. Um, so I set up a different system, which I will share with you in, in an upcoming video. I pulled out any sentimental papers. Uh, so any photos, any awards, certificates, clippings, any family recipes, artwork or report cards from when I was a child and my parents gave me, pulled all those things out of the filing cabinet put them in another system, which I will share a little bit about in an upcoming video. I actually did a whole course on um, organizing sentimental clutter and letting go and making those decisions. There's a link below if you wanna learn more on that. But I pulled all those things out, taxes came out of here, and basically all that I was left with was everything that I feel like belongs in a filing cabinet, all of your records. So medical records, financial records, pet records, car records, home records, and then any reference material. So. Uh, insurance uh, policies and paperwork, anything related to um, my business, like staff, payroll, all those things. So it's records and reference materials are all in all of these binders up here. And I'm so excited to share what the binders look like. Okay, so what I've done here is I've taken all of my favorite features out of all of these binders behind me. I'm not gonna show you all of them because that would take forever, but I created this one binder that has all the same features as all of these binders. And so that's what I'm gonna go through and show you. Okay, so this is the binder. Uh, I use the same binders for all of my binders except legal size. Uh, this is a better binder from Staples. It's actually called better binder. And um, in my opinion, they really are better binders. They come in so many different colors. The front has this nice pocket for putting some kind of a cover page or something. I always put scrapbook paper that matches the color of the binder. On the spine, the outer spine, there's a place to label your binder. And so all I do is I use the label that I would put in the filing cabinet, same thing here. Uh, inside the binder, one of the very first things in the binder, more so for the, the, the newer binders, a lot of the older binders don't really, don't really have this, but there's a built-in gusseted binder pocket 
on the cover and it's great for small things like note cards, CDs, thumb drives, you can put office supplies in here, you can put a journal in here. Uh, it's just nice to contain them right there. So in some of these binders behind me, some of the binders have important information that I often reference or um, they're just like, it's just really important information. So what I do is I call out that important information and I put it in a sheet protector in the very front of the binder to make it really easy to find, to access. Uh, and so basically it's an important note for future self. It could be a critical note reminder. It could be instructions on how to do something. It could be a checklist, a spreadsheet or a chart, just some kind of important information. All right, behind that, I have all of my dividers. So this is something you could never do in a filing cabinet, which you could have small file folders in a hanging file folder, but this is just so much more organized. Uh, I use the same dividers. I have all of the subcategories for the main category of the binder. So if this was a medical binder, some of your subcategories may be medical records, test results, dental, vision, um, OBGYN, skincare, so forth. So have all your subcategories. Now, if you use dividers like this and you label them with the label maker or you handwrite them and you wanna reuse your dividers next time, what you can do is before you label them, go ahead and make a copy on your printer or scanner, or something like that, before you label them and keep the copy behind the table of contents. So, um, you can reuse these things and have a fresh table of contents. All right, something else you can do here is you can have adhesive pockets on your dividers or somewhere on your binder for, again, containing something that is small, note cards, receipts, CDs, um, anything else, business cards. In here, you can put this in the front cover if there's no built-in pocket. So one thing you can do is if you have a lot of documents, you can further categorize them by date, by year, alphabetically, by um, some other kind of identifier. So for example, my husband has so many car records because his car is 13 years old. So what I did was I went through all of his car records, I organized, I organized them by year. So 2006 together, 2007 together and so forth. They're stapled and then in the upper corner, upper right hand corner, um, I just write the year, I highlight it. Uh, so next time I go to that file folder, everything is together. So for example, here's 2019, here's 2018, 2017, and so forth. And it just makes it a little bit more organized. So something else you can do in binders is you can use sheet protectors. So they make sheet protectors for all sorts of sizes. So you can put paint swatches in here. These are like small business card pockets. Obviously you can do business cards, but you can also do paint swatches. So what I've done in my home binders, I have paint swatches by room and then I label them like family room, bathroom, and so forth. Uh, you can also have, or you find sheet protectors for uh, note cards, for like, um, for work or something, for also for recipe cards, for photos. These are four by six. They also make five by seven. There's obviously full page sheet protectors for important documents. There's longer sheet protectors for like photo negatives or anything long. I couldn't think of anything else besides photo negatives. And then if you have a lot of uh, catalogs or brochures and you want to put them in binders, they make these little catalog holders. They just like slip right in the middle of the catalog and then they go into the rings and it's really cool. And then here is one of those gusseted binder pockets that is not attached to the binder, but it's just on its own. And that's, again, those are good for journals, brochures, and anything that is like loose that you don't want to, um, you want to secure it to the binder and make sure it doesn't fall out. Okay, so that's what all of these binders look like behind me. I hope you found this video helpful. If you're setting up a binder for the very first time, have fun with it, use your creativity and see what you come up with. And again, if you have stacks of paperwork and uh, you need more support to go through and declutter, there's a link below to help you get started. Thank you for being here and I look forward to seeing you in an upcoming video. Take care, bye-bye.